I think something that makes a tale of our time is where a facet of humanity is given a new perspective, and by doing so, shows us what has changed, what hasn't, or what could be. Welcome to Tales of Our Time. This is a show where we discuss the stories that move us, what makes them so meaningful, and why others should or could find meaning in them as well. This is not a spoiler-free show, so bear that in mind as you continue listening. We tackle movies, books, comics, and more. Where there's a story, there's a reason to read or watch for today's story. I'm your host, Amanda Stevens, and joining me today is my guest, Tyler Kelpar. Would you care to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Tyler. I've been living in Taiwan for about seven years. In my free time, I do enjoy playing video games, watching TV shows and movies, and also uh, looking for different perspectives on story analysis um, from a variety of sources, uh, mainly from YouTube. Well, uh, but, that will be really useful today because what story have you brought for us to discuss? Oh boy. Uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinart. Mm -hmm. Not that anybody probably needs introduction to this movie, given how famous it has been recently. But, dear listeners, I just watched this movie on the morning of us recording it because I couldn't bear to have it spoiled, and I really just missed the bus at the beginning of it. I cannot wait to discuss it. It blew my mind Like, not an exaggeration when I say I did not feel like I was ready to go on with my day. Yeah. I just wanted to sit there with the show and, like, process. Yeah. Which I think people warned me about, but I I was a fool. It's something that you should probably set some time aside afterwards to... uh, uh, to get into it um, mm-hmm. and to just think about it and ponder it, it's it's, it's mind blowing. There's a, it's it's quite mind blowing. There's a lot to unpack. I guess there. appropriate given the topic. Now it is possible too that there are other people out there who, like me, before this morning, haven't seen the movie. So I'm going to give you at this point what feels like a monumental task to ask: Can you summarize it for us? I will do my best. Shortly, yeah, that's okay. I mean, we're all about trying here. I yeah. think that's that's what I'd like to say. Right. So, there are. How, how would you try to summarize? <laughs> um, I will do my best. I will certainly try. Yeah. I will say that because there's so many elements uh, that do overlap with each other, I'm just going to try to hit the. I mean, the best beats. We're definitely going to miss. Stuff. Or that's okay. Miss if you lot. haven't seen it, like you can listen to this, you can skip ahead, but definitely mm-hmm. watch. Watch it. Definitely watch it's it. It's impossible to cover it all. It starts off. So, the beginning of the movie starts off with Evelyn Wong, and we get introduced to her family. Uh, she has a daughter named Joy, and she has a husband named uh, Waymond. And uh, her grandfather is also uh, included as well, too. And it is her father. Correct. But it's the grandfather her of the family. Father. Correct. Right. And so the beginning of the movie just opens uh, to establish the her life as she knows it. And it establishes uh, just the cycle that she's just caught up in mm-hmm. um, and how chaotic it is. This, this poor woman has no time uh, for herself and has no time. Uh, she, she, she runs a struggling water, uh, struggling laundry mat and, uh, she does, she spends every minute of her day and as she says, fighting and fighting to try to keep, uh, what she has. Um, and in doing so, uh, her relationships with her husband and her daughter have, have all but been nearly abandoned. Mm, they're breaking um, down. Yeah. And so, uh, as of course, as part of this, uh, she also struggles with taxes that's also another challenge for her as well, too. She's financially struggling. Uh, she's a Chinese immigrant, which which is an important part because uh, she goes over to go meet with the IRS agent, uh, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm. Uh, they were supposed to bring their daughter Joy to help translate, but that ended up not happening. After she goes over to the tax office, things start to really take off. We start to change. Um, well, we learn that there are other universes. Correct. And then that they're like you can access them 
Right. And in fact, she needs to. Yep, through some funky Bluetooth headsets. Yeah. And uh, she has her life flash before her eyes mm-hmm. uh, with this humorous ding uh, as the elevator door opens to show her uh, everything that has led up to this moment as as her mind synchronize, synchronizes to, uh, to the program, so to speak. Um, and so... Uh, and in doing so, she also meets Alpha Waymond, uh, who uh, is from the Alphaverse. Comes from the Alphaverse, and his role is to provide uh, the the situation that has been plaguing the universe and telling her, "Oh, there is an evil darkness um, that has come over and will destroy everything." Um, and he himself uh, has been fighting, you know, this war between good and evil, uh, trying to find the one. Uh, in this case, the one Evelyn uh, that mm-hmm. can f- turn the tides and save the uni- and save the multiverse. Due to a series of events, uh, she ends up um, in in another multiverse. A tax officer attacks her, and so. But what snaps her back to the main reality, and so uh, she ends up uh, uh, assaulting. Uh, the tax, tax officer, officer, and that kind of kicks off um, the the entire building, uh, the entire tax office um, being evacuated with only the main cast in there. And so in the process of doing that, Evelyn finally meets Jobu Tabaki. The big bad darkness that's been taking over the universe. That's right. And she realizes that Jobu Tabaki is her daughter. It's Alpha daughter. Evelyn's perception of Jobu Tubaki at first is that Jobu Tubaki is like possessing her daughter. Mm-hmm. And Jobu Tubaki shows Evelyn what she's been looking for. And finally, we get our first glimpse at the everything bagel. And the rest of the movie is spent her trying to not kill her daughter, like what alpha versions of them want to do, but instead spending the rest of the movie trying to understand her daughter and trying to see life from her perspective. And in doing so, Evelyn herself changes and she starts to connect with her her daughter and her husband, but mm-hmm. also herself yeah. and her own life. And it culminates in a, a beautiful moment of connection of a mother to her daughter and to her family. It's quite beautiful. Yeah, it is it is like the trope of like, the answer was love all along. Right. But in one of the most meaningful ways that I've ever seen it done, like in a very real and powerful way, there's a very good monologue. I'm not going to pretend to do better, right? But going through how, like you said, everyone up to that point has been like fighting and fighting and fighting and just basically perpetuating these this hurt that's like gone down through generations and not even generations, but the way that people's lives intersect. Right. And then how really the best way that it doesn't feel right, maybe in that moment is like being kind and like showing love to your neighbor. But like, when I tell you I was sobbing, I mean, I had to run to the other room to get more tissues. Oh, absolutely. It cut me up. How well done just the dialogue and like, Everything had built up to that moment. Like, yeah, yeah. Wayman's place in the entire mm-hmm. multiverse itself is is the linchpin that ends up helping that pieces everything mm-hmm. together. For an absurdist movie, it is very tight. So there, there's so much for this. But if you had to pick something about it that struck you the most, like what made this movie so meaningful to you above everything else, right. everything everywhere. All in the movie. Oh, yeah. There's so many elements uh, that I'd love to break down. Family relations, uh, culture and struggling in uh, in a culture uh-huh. that's outside of your own. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to have to Generational say... Generational struggles, too. Oh, I, definitely. Sorry. I, I think if I were to just pick one, I think that's the most... Uh, I'm going to go for the, the philosophical background for it like which one uh yeah I <laughs> it's know. weird yeah because there's ab- you have absurdism you have mm. um you have so many other different things uh but the one thing i'm gonna go for i think is the backdrop of of nihilism um mm. jobu tabaki herself from her experiences and what has happened to her mm. um and just all from everything that she's seen life has no meaning and for yeah. her from joy's perspective from jobu tabaki's and Therefore, like Joy's perspective that everything is just, even if you do have a moment of happiness, Mm. it's just a statistical inevitability. And it, even if you have it, sure, you feel good for a second, but then it's Mm. gone. And 
Evelyn's perspective and what she ends up learning is that she does see what Joy sees, hmm. but she makes a different choice after it. Mm-hmm. And I think not that's, by herself though. Not by herself. Wayman helps also... lead her to that. Yeah. Uh, and Evelyn says, you know, it it is all a bit joke, and everything is absurd, and everything is mm. crazy, and amidst all this chaos, I still just want to be with you. Oh my god, I like it's too I fresh. Know. I'm gonna cry. Okay, yeah, um, <laughs> you're right though. Well, and also like what you said, you said nihilism, which is also like one of the first things that I watch this with my boyfriend. He told me like, oh well, you know what? It also reminds me like it's a good metaphor for depression oh, as well absolutely right? just that crushing feeling of not even sadness mm-hmm. but of like what does it matter yeah like nothing nothing matters oh definitely you know uh from joy joy actually is experiencing depression herself yeah uh she's a lesbian and she tries to the one point that she tries to reach out is to try to have her mother introduce her girlfriend to her grandfather mm. and uh and just the that just you get that disconnection immediately Mm. uh the entire movie she doesn't want to fight her mother she just Mm. wants to reach out she just wants to be understood and i when i first watched the movie i was like you know like i think evelyn could have said something better but then when i went to rewatch it i'm like well i think that's that's kind of the nuance there Mm. is that evelyn she doesn't go through the movie saying oh i understand you now let's you know Mm. do all the hugs she goes no she she approaches it from her perspective Mm. as a mother even in the end she she just says she chooses to just be there even if she doesn't understand yeah she she does also sorry if i could jump in too i feel like it's also just like it's a reorganizing of what matters because you also realize like if we talk about like joy's sexuality right Mm. at the beginning her mom says like you should feel lucky because like i'm open to you having like a female partner but very quickly into the movie it like comes out where like it it was very obviously lip service she's not even really like putting in the effort she's just saying it right which obviously like if you have kids they can tell right right and and kind of at the end of the movie coming to like you said both choosing like i want to be here with you yeah. even if i can't understand and also like reorganizing what's really important and what's not yeah and her kind of realizing like ultimately i i may not understand it but it's not important to me whether or not you're with a woman like mm. that part that part doesn't matter to me it matters to me that you found someone who will support you and who loves you as i have yeah. i know i'm trying i know <laughs> it takes a lot of focus for me to like stay yeah stay calm yeah um but you know just that too of like realizing what's important what's not important in the grand scheme of things now that she has seen everything yeah. right it's more yeah. important that i just have my daughter that we have this connection and that like even if it's an anomaly that we choose we, we choose, choose each this. other absolutely right. oh. and i think with evelyn uh it was it's such a hard choice to just break that generational pattern that break generational trauma mm-hmm. of and culminating in the line of where she she looks directly at gong gong uh her, her father her, her father she goes no she's like i'm not going to abandon my daughter the same way that you abandoned yeah. me like, how could you let me go so how easily you, oh my god how could you let me go so easily Sobbing. and so and which just uh, just for this is the perseverance for her to just reach out and understand and connect with her own mm. daughter and it's just it's it's beautiful mm-hmm. um if yeah. you oh god <laughs> I just want to keep going, but I must push forward. Yeah. If you were to pick one reason that you think everything everywhere all at once is truly a tale of our time, would it be that, like just the reaching out for connection or is there even something more? Like what do you think reached the most people? If I were to isolate one component from the movie um, about how it emulates or how it could, how it's a tale of our time, Hmm. um, is that is I, I'd probably say the family unit, I think, and mm-hmm. its perspective that they take on that. Um, families and their definitions of them, they've changed like, over time. There's responsibility, um, there's expectation, there's societal expectation, there's individual pressure, mm-hmm. there's this need for freedom and individuality, but mm-hmm. yet to come back and return to uh, those that raised you, that, that, you know the most Mm. and in in this perspective it helps reinforce that concept that love and connection is 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 something that you choose 
for those around you every day. Mm-hmm. And especially in your family. Oh, definitely. And especially like intergenerationally, mm-hmm. right? Like choosing, like you said, if you want to come back to your family, like recognizing the impact that your kindness or that the repetition of patterns that were done to you can have. Yeah. Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, if you were to give this movie that is so vast and is already has the title Everything Everywhere All at Once, yeah. a subtitle, <laughs> a one-line subtitle, yeah. uh, what would it be? I would say that in a world where everything is chaotic and it's so absurd that... Mm-hmm nothing matters actually everything does matter all the little things you do everything all those little choices because you choose it yeah the choosing choosing that yeah and mm-hmm. you choose you you choose you oh my god those are both good though you choose you everything matters that's in that's in the that's actually in the opening line of the that's in the theme song of the movie base which like, one i choose you uh, and oh, you choose me that's right yeah well, which one do you want oh i think we choose each other. Choose. We choose each other. We choose everything. We choose everything. <laughs> no, don't, don't. I know, that was, I know, that was a bad one. I'd probably say we, we choose yeah. each other. All right. I can't believe the time's already gone, but like... It slips by. Oh, it always goes by so fast. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been uh, Tales of Our Time on Radio Taiwan International. I'm your host, Amanda Stevens, with my guest, Tyler Gelbar. Thank you for being here, Tyler. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed learning more. I hope learning more about everything, everywhere, all at once. We choose each other, a tale of our time. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.